Hello, welcome or welcome back to Fancy a Bladder Podcast, your weekly online diary of a Scottish gal sharing her Aussie adventures. Okay, so in an unexpected turn of events, we are back. Welcome or welcome back to Fancy a Bladder Podcast. I cannot believe I'm saying that. It has been so many months. Um... Wow, like nearly a year actually um, since I last recorded, which is crazy. Life has been wild, but, and I'm so sorry for the terrible audio quality. I am getting a microphone for the next episode. I'm um, just having a couple technical issues with it right now, and I live right next to a really busy road, so if you hear cars going by, sorry. And whilst I'm talking about the fact that I live next to a busy road, I am restarting this podcast to just like chat about life and what's going on and everything and maybe like sometimes have guests on but mostly keep it like a solo podcast um just as like a an online diary if you will because the craziest thing happened I moved all the way across the world I flew the nest flew the nest flew out of the nest and I have moved to Melbourne Australia what the actual F, mind-blowing. Um, I've been here for about a week and a half. I'm going to record an episode every week about like what's going on, how life is happening, differences between here and Australia, all that kind of stuff. Um, Yeah, so that's wild, exciting, fun. We love it. So hi to all my besties across the pond. Hi to all my new friends listening. So let's get into it. So I'm going to rewind, like take the clock back and talk about moving here at first. Like, kind of like, I'm not, am I going to get into a backstory why I moved? I just moved for like a change of scenery, change of pace of life because I'm young and I want to have fun. If I'm honest, like, I don't know, I just fancied like a change. Um, I don't really have much else to say about that. So let's get into traveling here the big, the big travel day. Um, the day before I flew here, I had been working the fringe, like, pretty much right up until I was flying, like, really close to flying. Um, the day before I flew here, I (laughs) had, like, a bunch of class pass points to use, and if I didn't use, because I had, like, 40, and it would only carry over 20, I was like, if I don't use 20 of them, I'm gonna lose money, so I last minute booked a massage the day before I flew here and I'd like looked at my clothes and I hate packing. I'm the worst packer. I got so stressed about packing and I looked at all my clothes I needed to take and I took out my suitcase, showed my parents who were gracefully, kindly, we love them, their icons, helping me pack and they were like, Christy, this is not all going to fit in there. And I was like, are you shitting me? Like you got me the suitcase, you know what fits in it and had like a total like meltdown moment and um... Yeah, so we realised that my suitcase was going to be too small and I could take a bigger suitcase with my luggage allowance. So my parents, whilst I went for a massage, I know, so spoiled of me, (laughs) went out and did an emergency suitcase purchase and thank God they did because they got me a big red one, we love her, and fit everything I needed and I brought it to Melbourne with me. So that was uh, the first great start to the travels. Um, last minute massage was the best decision I ever made. I then at the airport the next morning, I did not cry. I thought I would cry, like leaving my parents, but I'm not really like a, I don't know. I'm not like a cry in public kind of gal. So it didn't really happen. I was also just too tired to function. So, um, I went to the check-in desk to check in my luggage, which I haven't done in so long because I normally just fly with hand luggage when I go traveling. And, um, the flights, like, online said it, I had 23 kilograms, but apparently you can only take 20 kilograms from Malaysian Airlines. And then um, the lady was like, oh, your bag is 21, but do you know what? Like, it's fine. I'll let you away with it. And I was like, oh, my God, thank the Lord. Like, I was so stressed. I was like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? Like, I do not need this energy. And then I'm looking at the board before this, trying to figure out, like, where do I get my flight from? What time is it at? On my email, it never changed, and it said the flight was at 7.40 in the morning. And I was like, cool, I got loads of time. And then it turned out that the flight was actually 5 past 7. I don't know, like, 
why that was and I'm lucky that like my parents are all about like planning and getting places early so I had enough time that it wasn't like an issue but I have a friend who wor- who was like on the cast of a show with at the Fringe. I also performed at a show in the Fringe Festival. Crazy, so much fun. Um, That's like a total dream come true, like bucket list item. If any of my Around the World in 80 Days cast members are listening or director or like the theatre owner, um, big fan of your work. It's so much fun. I've never had so much fun in my life. Um, Yeah, so one of the guys, he works in like air traffic control and he was going to get him to do like a little shout on the plane that would have been so cute, so wholesome. But I got sent the flight wrong, so that did not happen. But hopefully on the way home it will happen. But then the flight was delayed anyway, so the flight ended up being at 7.25 by the time we actually took off. So it was kind of fine. Um, First thing I did when I got to Edinburgh Airport, though, was got myself a Cafe Nero. And I have to say, it's only been a week and a half and I am missing Cafe Nero desperately, even though I don't even go that often at home. But it's like the one chain that I go to when I'm at home like it's just so so good like mm, we love it so then yeah flight Adam to Heathrow totally chill fun chill vibes fun times um but then I'm like getting off the plane at Heathrow and going to like change terminal and I'm trying to figure out which terminal I need to change to and all of a sudden my phone just stops working like goes black screen which I've never done before it like definitely wasn't dead because I had a hundred percent and I was like what is happening why is this not turning on what is going on this is so stressful so I ended up looking um I ended up like totally freaking out and the woman was like asking me what term am I going to and I was like I don't know because my phone is just like totally freaked out I don't know what's happening like I managed to go on the board and figure out what term I was going to and there was this like younger girl getting on the same bus as me to the other terminal and I asked her if she could google like how to reset my phone because I was like do I take the battery out but I couldn't figure out how to even get the battery out on this phone so I ended up and then for a while I could see like take half the screen down on my phone but I still couldn't see the whole screen I couldn't reset it and I was like what is going on like this is so weird and I was like freaking out but trying not to freak out because I was like I don't have time to freak out like that is not going to help anything in my situation I was like I need to like just keep it together like everything's fine and then um yeah so it was fine and then I was like uh I need to stop saying like I'm so sorry so then I realized that I couldn't do anything about it so I just left it for a while to figure itself out and then five minutes later tried again and it was fine and it's still working now so I don't know what that was all about did not need that stress, did not need that energy, but we live and we learn, it's fine. Um, and I don't know why I learned from that experience, but regardless. Um, also, I have a security story I'm about to tell, but I have another security story. So I went at Edinburgh Airport, I got sent to like the other, the new security where you don't take out your laptop or your toiletries or anything. It just all stays in the bag and goes all the way through. Wild, we love it, it's so fun. Um, was so quick, amazing, easy, chill, love it. Apart from obviously I was like ready with everything out and I'd put everything back in, but it's fine. Um, and I am that person that wants the compliment from security. Like I want them to be like, wow, you got your shit together. Like look at you, you got everything out, you're ready to go. Like you're on the ball, you got this, like gold star. And the guy at the Heathrow security from the gate turnover, um, well, first of all, he was like, I was like putting my, um, I have like a travel wallet thing um which puts I put my passport and like any currency and then um any travel documents in and he was I was putting it away and he was like looking at it and I was like oh no no it's just like my passport and stuff and he was like no wait I want to see it like that's so cute and he was complimenting he's like I love that that's so cool and then I like already had like my hand luggage like I already had my laptop out and I already had all my toiletries in the ziplock bag and put the ziplock bag out and he was like oh look you ready Eddie I'm so impressed and honestly I've been waiting my whole life for that compliment and that like still fills me with joy every single time I think about it which like what does that say about me who knows probably should ask a therapist but I'm not going to because I don't care so then yeah things are looking up and like this is a great journey we're getting there we're having fun I'm trying to zip up my bag at the gate at London Heathrow and my little Highland cow keyring that I literally just got for myself to remind me of home, the keyring bit breaks. Like, 
sorry, I've not even left the UK and you're broken? Are you joking me? I still have it. It's on my shelf here and I think I can get it fixed. But um, yeah, that was not a vibe. Not cool. I was like, really? And then I had my music in, but luckily not really loud because my name gets called out on the tannoy. I have never had that happen before. I so scared. I was like, why? Are they calling my own name? And I just have to go up to the desk. I think it's because I was flying on a visa and also my luggage was getting like sent all the way over. So I need to confirm like the luggage that was getting sent onto the other planes because the first flight was with British Airways and the next two were with Malaysian Airlines. Um, so they needed like the luggage tag thing to make sure it got sent over. Um, so it was fine. I was chill, but I was just like, why am I getting called out? Like the gate's not open. And then the best thing to ever happen to me on a plane happened we get get on the plane to um Kuala Lumpur and I'm in the middle so it goes like the seats were three three and three and I'm in the the aisle of the three in the middle and then me and the couple next to me we notice that behind us there is nine empty seats and I was like oh that's really interesting and I like look like everyone was on the plane I was like hmm interesting and there's also like drama happening with the guy like some other guy um, with their um, some like one with one of the um air hostess or whatever, and it was actually really entertaining and fun to watch. Um, we love live entertainment. Definitely was eavesdropping that whole situation. And I am not ashamed to say it. But we um, I turned to the air hostess and I said, "Is there any way I would be able to move to that other row, like so, like the row behind, but at the window side with the three all together?" Um, if nobody comes and she's like, yeah, we're about to close the doors, so I'll let you know when the doors are shut. And if they are, then absolutely go for it, because um, no one else is going to be using them. But let me just check my supervisor, but I'm sure it'll be fine. And then she comes up with me, up to me, right before we're about to take off, and she's like, ma'am, I think it's about time. I'm like, what? She's like, move before someone else does. I was like, oh my god, really? So I ended up in a window seat with three seats to myself, all the way to Kuala Lumpur, which was my longer flight. It was like 13, 14 hours. And the one from Kuala Lumpur to Melbourne was eight. And I was like, you are joking me. This is such a dream. So that was incredible. It was like a free upgrade. I had the best time. I watched the Challengers film on the plane. Loved it. Really good. We love Zendaya and everything. And I watched this show called Power, Powerless or something like that with Vanessa Hudgens. Um, and I watched the rest of the season on the next flight. And I really enjoyed that. It was good. It was a fun vibe. I watched some of like another show like Musica or something. It was kind of weird. Um, it was a film. I did not really enjoy that. Uh, I don't know. It was kind of a weird vibe. It was like a little all over the place plot. But that was really fun. And because I had all three seats for myself, I could like get up and down whenever I wanted to. I wasn't like disturbing people, or going to the bathroom or whatever. So naturally, I decided to be that extra gal. And um, changed into my pajamas for the night, did my skincare in the morning, woke up, did like an eye mask, like an under eye mask, I didn't go full sheet because I wasn't trying to freak anyone out, um, kind of lucky wish I did, but maybe next time, because everyone was sleeping anyway, and then in the morning, like literally like freshened up in the bathroom, changed back into my clothes, and the bathroom's actually quite spacious on this plane, I was really impressed, changed back into my clothes, did another under eye mask, was being that extra girl again, so here for it. The food on Malaysian Airlines also 10 out of 10. Loved it, but I was so hungry, I probably would have eaten anything. So um yeah, and then landed in Melbourne. My second flight was kind of shit. I was playing with three, four, three, and I was in the middle of the four. And um yeah, the man next to me was man spreading man spreading, and then me and the gal on the other side of me, there wasn't like a barrier between our two foot bays. So she was like very much like in my foot bay half the time. And just like taking up a lot of space and it was just not a vibe. Did not enjoy, did not sleep well. And then I arrived at my hostel. I stayed at the nunnery for a couple of days. Um, not gonna lie, I hate it every second. Um, I am someone who just needs a hot shower. Like I can get get by with a lot of things without a lot of lot of without a lot of things in life, but one thing I cannot get by without is a hot shower. And I was like, what the heck? Like, it was either scalding hot the water there or freezing cold. It was never, like, a nice temperature and it was just so annoying. Um, the people there were, like, nice enough, but most of them were, like, there long term. And I just, like, was so tired. I was in the mood to socialise. And um, also, 
everyone was so loud like people would be screaming at each other like four in the afternoon and I'm like why are you shouting like you're literally probably right next door to each other like, just go through and talk like just not a vibe I also yeah I was like terrible jet lag I arrived on Wednesday at eight o'clock and I slept all day Thursday until like 10 p.m and then woke up I had some dinner at McDonald's I know we love this healthy queen and then came back and slept again until next morning and then I had my teaching agency meeting which went really well it was really fun and then I ended up going to a social that night to meet other teachers which ended up being so good because now I have like people that I'm already like hanging out with here which is cool I've already made like a couple friends like in the city so it's been cool because I've been like socializing and because I've only worked like one day so far I have a full week of work ahead though hopefully I definitely have three days but hopefully more and then I go to Sydney because it's school break so that's exciting and um yeah so I haven't really experienced the schools like loads here yet um I've done supply at home before so I kind of know like what the vibe is with supply ready but um yeah I have some other kind of random stories so yeah and then I moved obviously I was in the hostel for a couple of days we ended up going out one night for one of the girls birthdays from the teaching agency um to like a country bar and I went on the um mechanical bull thing and like cut my finger up um like took some skin off my finger and it's still healing and um, like a week later so that's fun but it was really fun that was a cool vibe we went to their flat first that they're subletting and it was so nice like bougie I was in the Tipton hotel or something apart from Sam and I got really lost on the way there but that's fun that's a vibe and it was really, really cool. It was fun energy. Everyone was like in a good mood and it was everyone was cool. And then um yeah, so then I moved to the place I'm staying. I'm staying like kind of between Hawthorne and Camberwell, like Hawthorne East, which is such a nice location. I love that it's like a neighborhoody feel, even though it's in the city. Like I don't feel like I'm not like in like a really busy part of the city, which I like, but there's still like stuff nearby, which is fun. And uh public transport's really good here. So that is so fun and we love it. Um, I did have my first ever experience of people. Well, I mean, I've had like quite a lot of like experiences of like, oh, you're Scottish, no way. Like my great grand Scottish or whatever, like in my lifetime. But I was at the bank. So I went to the bank to check in to like set up an account, an Australian account. And um, the gal I had first was lovely. And then I was like sitting doing it like in the like little booth thing with this guy. He's like asking me, he's like, Oh, you're from Scotland? I was like, Yeah, yeah. And he's like, Um, oh, are you from the Highlands? And I was like, No, no, I'm from Edinburgh. And he's like, Oh, I've never heard of it, which like that's so weird to me. Like, how have, have you heard of the Highlands and not Edinburgh? Like Edinburgh's a capital city. If anyone's ever heard of anywhere in Scotland, it's normally Edinburgh. And I'm also not actually from Edinburgh, I'm from Perth, but obviously saying that in Australia, people are like, Oh, you're from Western Australia. I'm like, No, like of course Scotland is just like Sometimes I just can't be bothered. I'm like, it's easier to say I'm from Edinburgh. And I've already like lost my accent a week and a half in because let's be real, I've never had a strong accent one day of my life. So who's shocked and not me? Um, so don't be coming for me in the comments. Like, you're not even Scottish, like why are you from Edinburgh? Yeah, I am. I'll literally show you my passport. Born and bred, baby. I lived there for 18 years. No, actually probably longer, 21. And then lived in Canada and then moved back again. And it was only there nine months. So I will not take that abuse. Anyway, as I was saying, I, yeah, so he was like asking me, oh, do you know anyone from the Highlands? And I was like, uh, yeah, and my dad's from the Highlands, which he is. Glad never, glad never, big it up. We love a Highland, a Highland guy. And um, then he asked me, he was like, oh, do they still do this thing where like, they cut each other's heads off to become king. And I was like, huh? He's like, oh, when I was younger, like in the 80s, I was watching a film. I think it's called The Highlander. I like looked it up and I was like, never heard of this film in my life. Like, sounds so weird. And um, he's like, do they still do that? Like, because I still think. And I'm not joking. Like, this man was not joking. Like, this man has been dead serious. Do they still do this thing? Like, sorry? Do they still do what thing? Does my dad still does my dad cut people's heads off like in 2024 as if that wouldn't be like all over the news like human rights viol violation like the UN involved like hello 
this is Scotland. Not like the barbarian times. Like, this is so crazy to me. So it was funny. Um, so I was like, mm, no, I don't think so. Um, and then he said to me, Celtic or Rangers? And I was like, uh, neither. Why are you asking me that? I'm not from Glasgow. I don't give a shit about football, if I'm honest. Like, I technically, I would say, like, at home, I say St. Johnston. Because support your local team. But I'm like, I don't care. Like, neither. It's not my business. Weird. Weird, weird vibes. So that was the thing. Uh, yeah. But my other observations that I'm going to make before I round off this episode. So far, in Australia, what I've noticed is the, like, lack of corner shops. Like, where are your, like, little, like, Nisa locals? Like, I just want to, like, go out and get, like, a packet of crisps late at night. Like, where are they? And everything shut so early here. Like, the cafe's closing at, like, 3 o'clock, which... We love that you have a work-life balance. That's amazing. But, like, I want a coffee at 4 p.m. with my friend. Um, so that's, like, weird. I'm still, like, trying to get used to that. Um, I have found the Milky Bar Biscoff white chocolate stuff is unreal. It's, like, the best thing I've ever eaten. So shout out to Australia for that one. Love that. I haven't tried really much Australian food. I did buy Tim Tams. But I haven't tried any yet. Um, I haven't tried uh, Fairy Floss or whatever it's called, you know, fairy bread or whatever it's called and then um a couple of things I've noticed in the schools so I've only really been to one school so far but just like have observed is first of all you don't have school dinners here which is wild to me like so wild you can like get a school order but it's like a pack lunch like what the kids get on a Friday at home um because Fridays are half days so they get given like a pack lunch to take away with them or have it like after school club or whatever but like Every other day of the week, the kids, like, can have school dinner or hot school meal. And for a lot of kids in, like, poverty, in, like, areas of poverty, that's, like, the only hot meal they're having it every day. And we obviously have, like, free school meals until primary five at home. And then, like, beyond if you're in a low-income household. So it's really, really weird to me that there's not school dinners because it's, like, I don't know, it's just such a different vibe. Like, lunch is so different here. And, like, yard duty being a thing, like, the teacher's doing that. I mean, I know, like, I'm probably doing it more than, like, a regular teacher would would, because I'm on supply. So they're like, oh, we'll make them do it. But that's weird to me because we don't do that. We, um, we have our lunch and the classroom assistants do everything outside. Um, but no, here, like, you have to, like, stay with the kids while they eat for the first 10 minutes. And they just eat, like, outside the classroom or sometimes inside if it's, like, raining or whatever. And then, like, you spend half the lunch on yard duty, like, in the playground, which also, like, it sounds like a prison. And then you get half a lunch, like, to eat your own lunch. You literally have a 30-minute lunch, which is so little, like, a shit. Um, so that's weird. You also don't have, like, the non-class contact works really different here. Like, it seems like they have planning days instead of, like, blocks throughout the week, which is kind of, like, I kind of like that in some ways because you can get so much done in a day, but also, like, I don't know, it's kind of, I don't know, I quite like, like, having non-class contact during the week. However, it's way better than last year when I had literally 30 minutes every day at lunch, and that was it, because I got nothing done, because my computer was so slow, and then five minutes at the end of the day, which didn't even count, because, like, the kids would always get picked up late. So, I really like that aspect a lot more, um, to be fair, uh, but that's what I've noticed, and obviously, like, having to wear a hat in the playground, that starts after the holidays and I need to try and find like a wide brimmed hat um that like looks nice because I don't want to look ugly and that's different because obviously we don't do that at home because it's not that sunny ever so that's kind of cool and I also noticed that like a lot of the classrooms seem to have like there's a classroom and then there's a little office in between and then another classroom on the other side and the office is like shared between the two teachers and I think that's so cool I love that that should definitely be a thing at home having like an office attached to your classroom so if you have like your non-class contact you can do it in that little office and then like you can still see your class but you're far away enough that you're like you're still doing your own stuff or whatever and like after school you have somewhere you can go I just think that's such a cool vibe so I really like that um I'm trying to think if I've noticed anything else at the schools um not really I guess I'm trying to think just like the way the day is set up is different uh 
but then that's just because I had a younger class before summer, so like that we had an afternoon break instead of a morning break. Whereas they all have morning breaks here, but that's fine. But I don't get a morning break though because I spend half of the break on guard duty, so you get like ten minutes, which is kind of crap. But then I finish literally when the kids finish, so can't complain. Which I'm really like adjusting to because I'm always the teacher that stays late and does stuff. But obviously, like it's not my class. I have nothing to do. I don't do any planning. The planning's already there for me most of the time. I do have like um a list of ten activities at the back back of my notebook that I always have with me because I have work supply in Scotland and I have shown up to teach a class for a whole day and being given absolutely nothing to teach them with. Whereas here so far I've always been given stuff, which is cool, but I also think it's good to just have backups just in case. Um yeah, and the kids are cool here. The kids here are pretty different though, I have to say, than at home. Like I don't know, the vibe is different. They seem a little bit more entitled sometimes. And also, like, I don't know, they're just, their thinking is a little more backwards. But maybe that's because I just haven't got to know them that well. Um, whereas, like, my class, I really, like, prioritize teaching them about equality and um, being kind and stuff. Whereas, like, if I'm in a class for, like, a day, like, they might not be like that all the time. They might just be while they're with me for the day. Um, so that is kind of different, which is interesting vibe, but it's been fun so far. I'm enjoying it, and I've also been spending way too much money on clothes here because it's fun. We love it, and I also bought like a couple of things for my flat just to make it feel a bit more homey, if you will. But I also did my first big food shop yesterday, which was really fun. Um, spent way too much money, but I had to buy spices and stuff, which I normally already own, so. It's just one of those things. And I meal prep my lunch for the whole week today. So we're in proud of her. We're proud of her. She's a she's a sustainable queen. And I've been going to Pilates classes near here, which has been really fun. And um, which were former yesterday. A really cool studio. Really liked it. And um, because I guess now I'm a Pilates princess, which that's a vibe. So yeah, stay tuned. Next week I will have probably more teaching stories because I will have actually been in schools properly next week and maybe some social stories i have a couple of, like social events on next week which i'm excited for and the week after will be a sydney recap but uh yeah thank you so much for listening to this podcast it is so crazy to be recording again and also so fun like i've missed this so much um life just kind of got crazy for a minute i guess um but i'm looking forward to doing this every week and just like having this treasure trove in the future to look back on like a time capsule if you will of things happening in my life um sometimes I probably will share like poetry on here or books that I'm reading and stuff that I'm loving but I want to keep the episodes like fairly unstructured and just make it like almost like an online diary because I've done the whole structured thing and I'm kind of over that for a while so yeah thanks for listening so new episodes will be coming out every Sunday I don't know what time yet because I haven't really decided. Probably like 7 p.m. but like Australian time. So it's like 10 10 a.m. British time. Um, but it's been fun. Um, please subscribe to the podcast. Um on social media, we are stories and stanzas, because I've kind of put all my stuff into one place. So on TikTok, it's literally stories and stanzas. On um Instagram, it's the same. I'm trying to check if there's any underscores or anything but i will have everything linked in the show notes as i always do for you all um so that you can follow along with my australian adventures it was, so it's stories and underscore stanzas and that's also where i share like my writing on tiktok i've been doing um i'm starting to do like some poetry videos again which is fun or some like uh like almost like I don't know what to call that like personal essay videos where I do like a letter it's like a voiceover to lots of clips um which is a vibe and uh yeah that's what's happening that's where we're at so yeah subscribe to the podcast also check out the website storiesandstanzas.com and thanks for listening have a good week bye